Hey, what's up, everybody? Just doing a quick video here to update everybody what I've been up to. Uh, it's been about a week, maybe a little bit more, since I did a uh, video. Kind of been under the weather a little bit, trying to stay running at the same time. It's, uh, you know, not always easy to do. Had a bit of a head cold the last week, uh, kind of coughing, sneezing a lot. Been uh, running out my day, then as soon as I shut down at night, take some cold medicine, try to get some sleep, you know how it is. Um, but yeah, that's what's been going on. Uh, before I get to updates on what I've been doing, I want to talk a little bit about Celadon going out of business. Yeah, I call them Celadon now because they are done. They are toasty. That turd has been flushed. Uh, you know, good riddance is what I say about it because the way I think of it is, yeah, the drivers are going to go through a tough time now, but honestly, I never heard anything really good about Celadon. Uh, they didn't pay particularly well. The maybe 10 drivers I talked to in my career that worked for Celadon, you know, whether it be at truck stops or uh, shippers or receivers, wherever, none of them really had anything good to say about Celadon. So um, I look at it as a blessing for them, you know, probably six months from now, now that they've been forced to look for something better, um, they'll probably be at a better company in six months to a year, having a better life. So, uh, I'm happy for them on that aspect. The other thing is I look at the carriers. You know, Celadon doesn't treat the people right. They cook the books, take advantage of drivers. Good riddance. Maybe a better carrier can step up and haul that freight. One that, you know, provides better for their, uh, provides better for their employees, you know, their drivers. One thing I always looked at was Celadon and, excuse me, I looked into Celadon because I was actually looking at a company in Laverne, Tennessee called Digby that uh, Celadon bought out. Um, my, at, at that time, they were in my neck of the woods. I was looking at Digby because I was looking for something maybe a little bit smaller, a little bit more regional. Uh, Celadon bought them out. I got to looking into Celadon. A lot of it was like um, bonus pay. You know, it was like Oh, well, we pay you bonus, bonus this for a bonus for that, a bonus. I particularly don't care for bonus pay. Bonus pay is taxed at a higher rate than wages. So if your company wants to give you a bunch of bonus pay, well, the IRS is going to win that because you're not, you're not going to win it. So um, I never, I never really seen anything at Celadon that was that intriguing to me. So, uh, you know, good riddance. And uh, next thing, um... You know, enough about Celadon. Uh, I see a lot of drivers out here on YouTube making winter driving and winter blah, 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 whatever, you know. A lot of them are very good. A lot of them are very interesting. Got some tips that I picked up on a few of them. Uh, you're never, you know, beyond learning. I want my winter survival, my winter surviving OTR, surviving driving, surviving life in the winter. I got a couple for you here. They're real simple. Uh, number one is uh, spend some money and buy yourself some clothes for winter. I uh, seen a guy in Minneapolis the other day. It was nine degrees outside. He gets out of his truck. He's got on a long sleeve shirt with a t-shirt over it. He's got on what appear to be men's leggings with a pair of basketball shorts over them and a pair of Crocs. And uh, his toes looked mighty cold. They were they were white and crusty, like a like a dried up dog turd. To be honest with you, uh, quite gross actually. And uh, he was complaining about it being cold. I was thinking, well, you know, you're in Minnesota. It's December. Probably ain't gonna get much warmer. Might want to buy a jacket and some pants, maybe some socks to go with them Crocs, maybe even a pair of shoes. Um. I know I wouldn't want to be walking around in a pair of Crocs on the ice out here, you know. Give me some boots with some grip on them. Uh, I mean, I ain't seen you want to bust your butt. You know, I took a pretty hard fall in a Walmart parking lot last winter on a sheet of ice. Luckily, I had on a really thick jacket. I had on pants. I had on a hat. Didn't take the fall that hard. The jacket took most of the fall, thankfully. That's my number one tip. <laughs> 
don't complain about it being cold in Minnesota when you're walking around in summer clothes. It's gonna get cold. Number two, don't lick the frost off the metal poles at the truck stop. It's only gonna hurt your tongue in the long run. Number three, there are no such thing as free lemon snow cones. If somebody offers you one, just walk away. That's my surviving OTR tips for you guys right there. Three jewels, three little gems. Um, take them for what they're worth, you know. Get what you pay for, I guess. <laughs> but uh, let's get over that. Let's stop talking about all that stuff. Let's get down to why we're here business trucking business so the last video i made i was going to grab that load down to south carolina it was kind of mediocre load but it picked up on a sunday and i said hey i take some money over no money this weekend actually turned out to be a decent little run didn't pay that great but it was a very simple easy run it drop and hook oh excuse me that live loaded uh, it took them maybe all of 30 minutes to live load it in and out the gate and probably 45 minutes with paperwork. Uh, simple little load, got down to the other end. Uh, I've delivered at that place multiple times. Not not from this shipper, but uh, you know it's a big warehouse down there, so I've been there before. Um, actually, was like the quickest I've ever been in and out of there. It was about an hour and a half. And uh, overall, not a bad load. It ran quick. Um, truck did okay with it. It was like 42,000 pounds through the mountains. I think I averaged about 6.9 on that. Um, about where I thought I'd be. You know, we're running winter fuel now. And, uh, well, you know, when you're pulling 42,000 pounds through, uh, you know, Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, fuel mileage might fall off a little bit. Especially with this truck. I gotta make a video review of this truck coming soon. Um, anyway, that wrapped up that week. Um, this is last week. So, started off down in South Carolina, uh, grabbed a load out of uh, Spartanburg area, going to Columbus, Ohio. Um, not a bad little run, had about 110 miles of deadhead on it, but. Uh, not that bad run uh 556 loaded miles uh even with the deadhead it still paid okay and uh the carrier paid the tolls for the west virginia turnpike because apparently some people that do this run have tried to get off and go around and it has ended in uh not good ended in really bad um so they tell me whatever you do don't try to go around the tolls we'll pay you the 30 something dollars for tolls to just take the tolls and I said, okay, sounds like a plan to me. I didn't want to get off of them anyway. I was going to take the toll road whether I paid them or you paid them, whoever paid them. Uh, turned out to be a decent little run. Uh, dropping hook on both ends, customer freight. Um, you know, it's kind of why I got into this deal I'm in. It, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. When the if freight prices come back up and the spot market's killing it again like it was in, you know, 2000 late 2017 2018 uh yeah probably go back and rent a trailer run spot market more but uh you know for where i'm at right now they got a lot of contract freight it's a lot of retail freight uh this load was not retail freight uh i guess it will be eventually but it was in the you know it was more of uh factory production type stuff but uh it weighed less than twenty thousand pounds and uh yeah we got on with it we picked it up tuesday afternoon delivered it wednesday around noon which led me up to columbus ohio where i grabbed a load out of chili cofe i think that's how it said i've been through there a billion times i think that's how you say it chili cofe cofe i don't know i'm not a, i'm not a linguist or whatever you would call that um so I grabbed a load out of there. Uh, that was going back to Minneapolis. Uh, that one was pretty heavy. That one was like 42,000 or something like that, 43. It was on up there in the weight as well. Um, that was a live load. And on the, on the load, on the shipper side, on the uh, consignee receiver side, it was a drop and hook. 
So, um, the next load I got out of Minneapolis, off the yard, preloaded. Uh, that was going down to Illinois. That was like 405 miles, no deadhead. Um, but I take that back. It was from like five miles away. I say no deadhead. If it's under five miles, you know what I mean? It was literally like two streets over from the yard. So I count that basically as no deadhead. Um, but dropped that, ran over, uh, pulled an empty back to the yard. And then, um, the, went from the yard down to Illinois. That was drop and hook on both ends. And, like I said, 405 miles. You know, that's a retail load. That paid about two bucks a mile. Um, so, you know, you're not killing it with this stuff, but it's very, like, consistent they handle a lot of the stuff, you know, it's like, um, after they take their cut, I'm usually in like the dollar seventy-five ish range, um, and, you know, I'm probably averaging like a dollar seventy, dollar seventy-five on these miles, uh, you know, they're, they're paying tolls, they're paying fuel tax, um, you know, so basically, it's buy the cheapest fuel you can find. Don't worry about fuel tax. Just buy the cheapest, fill it up, go. Um, so, um, the next load I picked up out of Illinois, I had a 33-mile deadhead on that. It was a 409-mile load coming back to our yard. Um, you know, that's another benefit of doing this. And like I said, if the spot market starts popping, I'll probably go back to spot market because... Uh, but when, you know, you're going to do contract freight, it needs to be quick and easy because it's not going to pay a whole lot, you know? It's why companies like Schneider have a million trailers dropped everywhere, you know? It's because that contract freight's got to turn. You got to turn it, you know? So that's what I do appreciate here, being a smaller company. Even though it is a smaller company, they do have a couple local drivers in the Minneapolis area that run out and get our stuff loaded for us and bring it back to the yard and you know a big part of that is so we look more professional you know you don't have some random OTR guy that's never been somewhere showing up you know like these local places know our drivers they know you know we know what to do when we go there or they know what to do when they go there you know they sent me for a local pickup the other day and I mean, I didn't screw it up, but I guarantee you when I go back there the next time, I know it, you know, I handle it a lot better. You know how it is. When you've been somewhere, you figure it out, and then when you go back, you're more comfortable with it. So, um, I grabbed that load out of Illinois. That was a dropping hook. That was a retail customer. Uh, that was coming back to the yard. Uh, that'll get delivered by a local guy, you know. Um, I don't know. Like, it's not a bad setup when you're not having to do a lot of loading, unloading, that type of stuff. Um, and then from the yard, I grabbed a preloaded trailer yesterday and ran it down to Bedford Park, Illinois. And that wrapped up my week right there. I did one, two, three, four, five trips last week. Uh, South Carolina to Ohio, Ohio to Minnesota, Minnesota to Illinois, Illinois back to Minnesota, Minnesota back to Illinois. Like I say, we do a lot of freight from Minneapolis to Chicago. I'm okay with that because most of it's drop and hook and the majority of it's not going into Chicago. The majority of it is around, you know, the suburbs, the outer suburbs. So, um... Did five loads last week. Did uh, 2757 on miles last week. Which isn't bad because that South Carolina load that went down from Minneapolis delivered Tuesday morning. So this is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So... 
and technically I ran the majority of this South Carolina load Wednesday. So this was like a five, maybe five and a half day week, you know. And of the five trips, let's see, I did, uh, I did one live load. And then this morning I did a live unload in Bedford Park. So of the five loads I did total, I did uh, all drop and hook except one load and one unload. And uh, But let me tell you, that unload this morning in Bedford Park, why they have all those uh, old warehouses where you back in off the street down there, the backing in was not the problem. It was a four-lane road with like a six-foot median. I had room to work. Other than all the people trying to get to work, going up and down that road. I swear to God, I sat out in the road for like 30 minutes waiting for an opening. And when I say an opening, I'm talking about just enough to get the truck into the oncoming traffic. Because as soon as I got it in there, I could work. But like that traffic did not stop for 15, 20 minutes, nonstop, just steady traffic. And I'm like, as soon as I backed into traffic, I'm talking within 10 seconds, somebody was honking their horn. You know, what are you going to do? Um, those are always fun, though. You know, keep you on your toes. Make sure you, you know, you don't forget stuff. But that pretty much was the week, uh, 2,757 miles. Um, did really good on fuel last week, even though I pulled, um, you know, I pulled one heavy load. That was a light load. That was. Yeah, I mean, the first load of the week was like 19,000 pounds, and I had like a 44,000 pounds. That one load from Ohio was heavy. The next load was really light. I want to say it was like 8,000, 9,000 pounds. Then the load coming back to Minneapolis uh, from Illinois was like, it said 27, but it felt a lot lighter than 27. I don't know if they just overed it to make sure they were good. Um, actually, no, they had a scale on site. It was like 22,000 pounds. They had it down as 27. But I scaled it on site, and, uh, yeah, it was like a little over 20. And, uh, then the load I took down yesterday was, uh, about 28,000. It was packaging materials. Um, overall, not a bad week. There's going to be quite a bit of profit in that because fuel mileage was good. Uh, I felt like I ran with the wind more this week. No Bob Seeger in it out there. Um, but yeah, that's what's up, guys. Overall, uh, not a bad week. Um, I'd like to repeat that a little bit more. Um, now that I'm more on, you know, I'm not lingering because technically payroll cuts off. Monday morning at you know twelve oh one, so whatever you do Sunday should cut it off, and then Monday through Sunday is you know where the loads add up. And I had been pushing it into Tuesday on delivery, so they were letting me get away with that, putting that on the week before. So this week I didn't go over. My goal is thir is three thousand miles a week is my goal, but I didn't go over that this week. I'm kind of glad I didn't know because it gets my week back to normal, you know. It's like, uh, I don't mind delivering on Monday morning as long as it's not like a huge chunk of Monday to get that on. Because, you know, basically you're just pushing the money, you know, back. It's like, and if you want to take a day off when you're like delivering like that, you're going to have one week that's just going to be super low, crushed, you know, nothing good of it week, so... I like being on more of their payroll schedule and not having to drag stuff into the next week. Um, so I got that accomplished. Um, I don't know. We'll see how it works out as far as uh, um, this week. We'll just have to, you know. I'm, I'm running a load right now from Wisconsin uh, back to the yard. Um, let's see. I took Saturday off at the house. I got home at like, um, I'm trying to think of what time that was Saturday. I got back super early. I got back at like 10 in the morning and I was basically out of hours. 
so I took off till Sunday morning so that week also includes a day off so really yeah that's like a four and a half five day uh, week right there to get that you know but there again running on recaps uh, that's how it goes when you run like that but I'm gonna hop off here everybody I'm an old windbag and this has gone on way too long uh, <laughs> If you stuck around this long, thank you. I do appreciate it. Leave me some comments, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, guys. Until later, take care of each other out there. Bye.